So here I'm starting with a brand new S-Frame model and I've actually saved the file. So I've saved the tell file before importing the DXF information. That's an important step. You need to save the file first. And then right now I have no other information within my model. It's a blank model. It just has the default materials and that's pretty much the only thing that's been defined so far. If I want to start with the import process, I go to the file menu. Under the import option here, I can click on the DXF button. And here I have the SRAME DXF import utility open. And I can go to the file menu and click open. And here I can see an open dialog that allows me to select the DXF file of interest. We'll go into more about DXF files later on, but here I can see that I have three different files that I can choose from in this folder. I'm going to choose this one called torus.dxf. This has actually been generated in Rhino, and it's one of those geometries that it would be difficult to generate within S-Frame. If you're used to S-Frame, you notice that most structures generally don't look like this, so typical structural engineering software may not necessarily be best suited to generating this type of geometry. But since we can import the data into S-Frame, we're able to use S-Frame's finite element solver and if necessary, even the design tools that attach to S-Frame in order to further process this model. So here I have two windows. I have one for the DSF objects where I can choose the units that I'm importing in as well as specify which layers I want to import uh, and which lines and polygons. Now in the case of this model, I only have polygons. So that's what's showing up here. Uh, but you can see that there's a number of different polygons that can activate or inactivate as I like. And then on the far left side here, I can see that I have the S-Frame object. So this DXF objects window basically shows me the information that S-Frame is importing from the DXF file. And on the left-hand side here, the S-Frame objects window shows me how we can import that information from the DXF file into S-Frame. So let's notice several different polygons. I could import those as panels or as shells. I'm going to choose them to be imported as shells. And I can give them a thickness, which I'll just say is 12 and a half millimeters and perhaps even a material. I'm just going to expand this window here. So I'll just give it a material and I'll say that it's a steel material. Now, once we're done with all this, I can just click the file menu and then import. And if I close this window, I can see that my model has now been generated in S-Frame. And if we look at the shell properties here, looking at the quadrilateral element tool, for example, here I can display the thickness and I can see that I have a 12 and a half millimeter thickness for all these shells. And the model is actually generated with sufficient detail that I could go ahead, apply some supports and some loads and run an analysis very quickly. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign some supports here, uh, just arbitrarily to the bottom of this. Let's just say fully fixed at that one location. And I'm just going to define a self-weight load. and go ahead and run my analysis. So I'll run a linear static analysis. And we're able to look at some results. So here I could look at the results for the shell contours, for example, and I could see how the structure is responding to the loads and the support conditions that I've defined. If I wanted to look at something like deflections, I could see those as well. So I can see how much deflection I have in my model. And if I really want to get detailed, I can look at S view. And in S view here, I can look at the results for the self weight low case and see things like the deflected shape and how it's deflecting as I apply that load. Obviously we have an exaggerated scale there. So from that exercise, we're able to see how easy it is to go from a DXF file that was generated in another application, import it into S frame, and then start working with it within S frame to get ready for analysis and perhaps even design if it's the right type of structure. So on that topic of importing DXF files, one thing that we need to keep in mind is that S-Frame is going to be looking for what I will call a stick or shell model, something that looks like what we just imported. Uh, so what I mean by that is that if you've, ex if you've drawn in all of the facets of your I-beam, for example, if it's a steel beam or column, S-Frame is really looking more at a stick model in that scenario, and we'd apply a section property to that stick. So in most ca cases, your imported DXF file should look somewhat like an S-Frame model before you import it. Obviously, there are some exceptions, and we're happy to answer any questions if you're unsure, but it will just ensure success once you go through the import process. Another tip we have, and I'll show you an example of this in just a second, is to explode your model to help with importing. And this is only necessary if you have issues importing your model. 
It can break down the model, which may contain proprietary information that S-Frame's import link uh, may not necessarily understand, and it can break it down into simpler components, which is all it really needs to import the data into S-Frame. Another suggestion we have is to save the DXF data close to the origin of your AutoCAD file before importing. If you have a model that's located several kilometers away from the origin, uh, you may just run into issues uh, when importing the model into the S-Frame file. So I'm actually going to just go through one more example here. And I actually have this model constructed in AutoCAD already. So this is the model that I'm going to import. You notice that I have two separate layers. I have one for the vertical members and one for the horizontal members. And it's basically kind of like a grid of members uh, in the horizontal uh, plane there. So right now this is saved as a DXF file. And if you're not sure how to save a DXF file, if you're using AutoCAD, you can just go to the file menu here, click on the Save As button, and you can choose what type of file you'd like to export. Alternatively, there are other options available from that file menu if you'd like to use that instead. And I'm going to import it into a new model that I actually have saved already here. So this is just another model that I'm ready to go with S-Frame. The only difference between this model and the previous one that we started with was that this model not only has material properties, but I've also assigned two different section properties to start things off. And you'll see why I did that in just a second. So let's go to the file menu and click on the import model. DXF, and I'm going to go to the file menu, click the open button, and I'm going to choose this option here. It's import1.dxf. That's a model that I was working on. And one thing that we noticed right away here is that when we imported this model, we have these horizontal members, uh, which originally were in kind of a grid pattern. But when we import this, we're noticing that they're no longer in a grid pattern. We only see them going in one direction. And this was by design. I set this up specifically to show how this process works. We're using specific element types that S-Frame's DXF link doesn't recognize that AutoCAD uses. In order to import this correctly, we'd have to explode the model first. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open the model back up in AutoCAD. And if you're using AutoCAD, the command to explode is just to type in explode or the first couple letters and then select it from this drop-down list. And you can just select which objects you'd like to be a part of this group. So here I'm just going to select everything here. I'm going to explode everything. And then just resave this file. So I'm just going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to save it as another format here, uh, DXF format. So I'll just call this import one explodedxf So I just saved that file again. You can see the updated name. And now I'm going to close this again. I don't need to save it as a drawing format. And I'll repeat the process. I'll go to File, Import, DXF. And from the DXF Import Utility, I'm going to go File, Open. And you notice here I have the new file that I just saved. I exploded it and saved it. So I'm going to select this option. And now we can see that it now is recognizing those elements. So the trick here is if you don't see your model represented the way you expected it to in this little preview window, I'd recommend going back into AutoCAD, exploding the objects, breaking them down to their simpler components, and then repeating the process of importing. In this scenario here, I have two different layers. You notice the horizontal and vertical layers, so I could toggle them on or off if I wanted to ignore certain layers. But for now, I'm going to keep everything. In the S-Frame Objects window here, I can go into the Members tab, and I can choose how I'd like to import these members. So here I can select what type of member type is assigned to each layer as well as a section. So if I want to assign the section, the larger section to the horizontals and the smaller section to the verticals, I can do that here. And the same thing for the verticals. I can assign my specific materials to those elements. Once I'm done, I go to the File menu and then Import. And I'll just close this dialog now. And you can see that S-Frame has loaded up the model as I wanted it. And I can also see here that we've got our model separated into folders in S-Frame as well, based on the layers that we've imported. And the sections have also been assigned for me automatically. So if you assign your layers in AutoCAD in an organized fashion, you can save yourself a lot of organization time in the S-Frame model as well, and make sure that your model is broken down into the group folders that you like. So I can just focus on verticals or just on horizontals if I'm interested, and work with whatever elements are required for that specific task.